Good afternoon, everybody. A couple of uh, house cleaning items before we get started. Uh, please mute your cell phone. When asking a question, provide your name and media affiliation. Uh, that also goes for our friends on Zoom. Raise the hand function for questions. Recording press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited, and the only photography in the room are still shots. Thank you. So, first of all, the victorious Princeton Tigers, our student athlete guests are Ryan Langborg, Tosan Amoa, and um, oh, Okay, and Blake Peters, and the head coach, uh, Mitch Henderson, yes, gentlemen. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Mitch, uh, let's start with you. Uh, a very, very sound performance uh, throughout the game, and I was just told a few minutes ago it's the largest margin of victory by a 15 seed ever in the NCAA tournament. So congratulations, and the floor is yours. <clears throat> First, does anybody have a stat sheet? Any available? I'd love to see the stats. Um, <clears throat> Um, you know, the, this started for us two years, three years ago. Um, we took the season off for COVID, we came back. Ryan and Tosan were contributors as freshmen, but sophomore hit their junior years. They were, we had a terrific team a year ago. And we lost in the championship game, didn't go to the answer to blaze. We could barely watch the tournament. And, and we were, we were finding out what we were with a new group. We lost two first team, you know, we lost some all Ivy guys. Um, and uh, this group is really, really confident. And this guy right here on my right um, was not named to any all league teams at all. Was not voted to any, and he was the best player on the floor tonight. And if you wanna argue, I'm happy to argue with you, anybody in here, but he was awesome. And he's been awesome for five, five straight games. And then Blake, Tosan, everybody knows a lot about Tosan, so Tosan, I hope you don't mind. But Blake Peters has been making shots coming off the bench for us for weeks, and you gotta have that going into the tournament. This is a very, very confident group. We are so thrilled to be going to the Sweet 16. Um, um, uh, it, it, is a, it is an absolute pleasure being around these guys. They, um, they just grit their teeth, and they do it. It's, a, it's tough, and we finally made shots. This is the first half stats. I don't know, how many threes did we make? Okay. Yeah, 12 threes, all right, there we go. 12 threes and, and only nine turnovers, Tosan, that's pretty good. Okay, uh, before we open it up for questions, um, due to the volume, and we try to get to as many of you as possible, and we have some Zoom people as well, one question per person. Uh, Joe, start with you. Coach Joe Davidson, Sacramento B. And you're looking across and you see that whole sea of orange. Yeah. Did you recognize faces? How yeah. fun was that as it wound down and, and, yeah, and it that, became reality? It's like uh, hand, more than a handful of guys that I, that was, I played with, um, multiple players that I've coached, family, friends. Um, we really drew on the strength of our fans this weekend. And, uh, you know, Princeton is a, a really – I don't think anybody does it quite like Princeton. I know I'm biased, but there's great school spirit. And um, the school does that. You know, it's a four-year institution. You have personal relationships with your professors and all the student athletes know each other and, and it really makes you feel comfortable. And um, you know, we, we are so proud to be representing our school and playing great basketball in front of uh, uh, what was, I thought, a, just a terrific crowd. Gentleman in front. Mark Spears, ESPN's Anscape. Uh, Tulson, just uh, as a senior to be here through your journey, just kind of give your thoughts about your emotions being here at this point after everything you've done to get here and just coach your to follow up on his journey as well. Yeah, unreal, obviously. Um, you know, I, I can't really put the feeling into words right now, to be honest. Um, it's just an unreal feeling to, to do this with, you know, my guys and my teammates, the coaching staff. and. Like Coach said, it's it's been a, a few years in the in the making, I think, and uh, we just have such a close group, and we love to work with work with each other. We love to push each other, and you know, it's it's showing. Um, just a, a group of really tough guys, and and I, it's all coming together at the right time, I think. Let's take one uh, Zoom just, call. Let me just let me just oh. follow up. You know, Tosan's passing. Won't you won't see that again at Princeton for for 50 years, 
I mean, he's really a very unique passer. I, when, we, when he came to us, I, I called it like it was like first week of practice. Ryan and Blake, no offense, but it was like a brilliant blinding light from heaven. I was like, okay, this is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, he's been an enjoy to coach. His humility is extraordinary. Okay, let's take the first Zoom call. Dan, can you hear us out there? Yep, Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Coach, outside of the COVID year, uh, 11 seasons to, to work to this point to advance in the tournament and get to the Sweet 16. So just how sweet that is for you and to the student athletes, what we should know about Princeton around the country. Um, I've, I've always dreamed of playing deep into the tournament. I mean, as a player, got to the second round multi a couple times, never, never got beyond it. So uh, I'm just I'm, I feel like these guys is unbelievable. Yeah, Questions? I mean, I Ron? For both Mitch and Ryan, um, sort of what you were thinking when the fans started chanting Sweet 16, and, and Mitch, you kind of just referenced it. You guys have had big first round wins, but it's the first time in the Sweet 16 since 1967. Um, and, and just the significance of that, if you could sort of describe that. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously being here is pretty surreal. Um, coming into this tournament, I think we, this is what we all wanted. We're not done yet. We got a bunch of games left, hopefully. But uh, um, yeah, it's, like Tosan said, it's hard to put into words. It's just we're all so excited and uh, we're ready to get after the next one. Bahi. Uh, Blake, uh, to your straight ahead, Bahi Gregorian, Kansas City Star. I, I, do I understand correctly your parents, grandparents went to Missouri? Yes. And it, does that play any place in your, in your mind after a day like this, uh, just, just having had that kind of performance against them? It does. Um, you know, last couple of days, uh, I know they've been having a couple. They had a watch party for the round of 64, had a lot of friends over at their house, and they had another big one today. And, uh, you know, they, um, they went to Missouri. They're very passionate Tiger fans, but I know they were cheering for their grandson today. And, uh, you know, that's what, that's what makes things like this so special is – Get to do it in front of your family here, watching back at home. Um, yeah, I hope they're I hope they're proud of me. Jerry, yeah, Jerry Brewer from the Washington Post. There, Ryan, uh, you had 11 of the first 13 points. Uh, how did it feel to get those first couple go down after not getting one against Arizona? I mean, it's always nice to see the ball go on the net, but I mean, I got to give credit to this guy, these guys next to me. Um, Tosan was finding me, and I wouldn't have been able to do any of that without them. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean. Uh, shots weren't going in for mu any of us really in the last game, and uh, to see the ball go through the net, it's always a great start to the game. In front, hey guys, Wilson Collin from the Daily Princetonian. Um, flash back a couple weeks ago, y'all blew a 19-point lead at home against Yale. You almost blew it on the road against Harvard. How did those games prepare you for playing with the lead today in such a high-pressure environment? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, you know, I. I said before that the, the kind of end of our season, um, the last five, six games, they were all huge games um, for us. They all felt like championship games. Um, you know, that Yale loss specifically was a massive turning point for us, I think. Um, we were able to refocus, you know, the day after, you know, at practice and, and going forward with games. But all those games were, were big games, and, and um, that kind of gives us confidence, you know, going into each game here. and. And, and in the Ivy Championship as well, just, you know, we've been here before. Um, we've played on, obviously, this is the biggest stage, but we've played on, on, a, on a big stage and been able to get it done. And we have confidence in one another to, to, to you know, uh, show out and, and have a big performance. Let's take a second Zoom call. Sir, your affiliation and name. Uh, Jerry Carino from the Asbury Park Press. Congratulations, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Jerry. You, you guys and FDU have galvanized a state of 8 million people. What do you think you've shown the world about New Jersey college basketball and mid-major basketball in general? I mean, there's, I guess there's, there's something in the water. Um, so it's something's helping us. But, uh, yeah, no, it's great to represent New Jersey and um, be able to bring it home for all the people there and – yeah, we're just, we're over the moon. Gentleman over here. Uh, yeah, Kyle Bonagher with ESPN. About 10 minutes left in the game, they had cut it to six, and it felt like they were kind of clawing their way back in there, and you guys go on a big run after that. Other than making shots during the next four minutes, what can you kind of attribute to the turnaround? We're a tight group, and, you know, 
coach always likes to go like this when we're losing when we're losing leads you know we're we're coming apart but today we stayed together and you know if that metaphor doesn't illustrate um, our togetherness like it did today then I don't know what does you know I always think when they're chatting a lot when you go back to the huddle and you're about to talk to them they're really long timeouts you know it's the long TV medias and this group's like right and um, he doesn't talk much he doesn't talk much right but today they were very chatty and it was really fun. You, it, it, very enjoyable game to coach. In the corner over here. Sir, you. Coach uh, Jay Lewis from the Columbia, Missouri. You guys won the rebounding battle 44-30, to 30, I believe, in a, a top 10 rebounding team in the nation. What really goes into your guys' success on the offense and defensive boards? I mean, we've, we've got terrific players. Cade Pierce, um, you know, 16 rebounds. He's a freshman, um, <clears throat> and um, you know, I mean, Zach Martini, Tosan. I mean, we, we've we've made it a huge priority. Keyshawn, um, and uh, and it's a, it's a very we're, we're they're, they're playing absolutely fearless and they're unafraid of anyone. Questions? I was just wondering for any of you guys uh, how Thursday's game, uh, if you gave you any confidence, momentum that you felt, and, and how did you let, deal with the last two days, people talking about you and all that kind of stuff, and kind of just stay focused on today? Yeah, I think, you know, so Thursday obviously did give us confidence. Um, you know, it was, it was nice to be able to ride momentum into this game. Um, but like you said, it's, you know, about f um, remaining focused on, on the next thing, and, you know, it, the world looks at it as two upsets, but you know I, I keep feeling like we're supposed to be here, um, and we have a lot of confidence in one another and, and what we're doing. So there's there's definitely no lot up with this group. Ron, Mitch, Ron Krejcik from the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, you obviously have the context of history, having played and everything, and as we talked about earlier, you know seeing first round wins, the significance of getting the Sweet 16, and and how that sort of affects the legacy of this team. You know, I think that, you, you know, that, the, that, that'll hit us when it's over. Um, we're flying back. We'll be in New Jersey in about 10 hours uh, tonight. We're taking the red eye home. And I told him at halftime, I said, you know, we're going to get on that flight. We were up seven at half. We had coughed up uh, seven, seven points. I said, you know, we're going to get on that flight no matter what. When we get on that flight, we're, we're going to be us. And the best version of us we felt like could beat the best version of them. And the, the, they did it. And, you know, yes, we're going to the Sweet 16, but this is a really unique group. And I think in the tournament, each group has a special life. And this one has a really special life. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just, again, just so proud of them. Lai. No. Joe. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, Coach Henderson, um, I didn't know Caden Pierce was a freshman. He did have six mm. offensive rebounds in the second half. But the gentleman right here, uh, Blake Peters, in that second half, he didn't take a shot. And he ended up five for eight, and all of them were behind the yard. Uh, Blake, I want you to start on that. You know, what was your focus, you know, going into that second half? Because they left you in the corner a lot. And Mitch, uh, Coach Henderson, you can talk behind that. I just uh, – <clears throat> All year I've been working on, uh, you know, kind of reading Tosan and other guys. Um, I think I do a good job finding open space when he drives. And Missouri kept coming off, so I just tried to find open space. Tosan found me. Some of the other guys found me. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we've, we've all put in a lot of work shooting the ball. Our, our, our slogan is make shots. And, you know, today I made shots, but I think it was more about making plays. So, you know, when you get the ball, when you're on defense, stay locked in and, you know, even if you don't play in the first half, like who cares? Can't control it, and just kind of go with the flow. So Blake, Blake, um, he's an absolute driller. But on Fridays at Princeton, you have a little bit less class. It's the one day where we could practice just a little bit earlier, but we haven't been able to because Blake speaks fluent Chinese. Not, and not fluent. Close. 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 And he wants to be Secretary of State, and so he's absolutely unflappable. And I, I you get my vote. <laughs> um, he's uh, he's he's very calm under pressure. And that's, that's, um, that's how he is. That's how he goes about his business. Vahi. Mitch, uh, your, your defense today, I, I don't think Missouri ever really got in a rhythm. I mean, maybe in bursts here and there. What, I'm sure it's hard to summarize, but what, what do you think you did that 
had them seemingly discombobulated a bit. R really tough group. We can switch. They know exactly what, what they're supposed to do. Um, they keep their body in front of their guys. Good old-fashioned, just tough nose defense. Our league also, is just, it's so hard to guard in our league. Um, we've seen a little bit of everything we've saw the last two games in our league regularly. I know that you guys all say that, well, that's Arizona and it's, it's Missouri. But for us, it's the same actions. It's just different players. And you got to keep your body in front of them, and you got to contest shots. And, and I mean, it's a really hard, tough nosed group. They know how to do it. Gentlemen, we're out of time. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day. Right Good luck in uh, Louisville. Thanks. Yeah. Good luck, coach.